Um, I will be dealing with the complication avoidance in adult deformity surgery. Uh, it's a very complex uh, problem. Uh, complication rate in lumbar degenerative deformity surgery is approximately 40%. There are many series uh, reporting different numbers and most of them are pseudoarthrosis, and reoperation rates are uh, about 36%. The reason of reoperation is the pseudoarthrosis repair need to lengthen the fusion and adjacent level disease requiring decompressions. Uh, one study from 2014 has collected 423 cases, and total measure complication was 42%, and the risk of uh, major complication is the older age, if the patients are older than 60 years old, and that if there are two osteotomies and if there is a thoracic osteotomy. Uh, the main problems uh, are the uh, pre presence of osteoporosis, uh, more deformity, uh, the other speakers also uh, covered that issue, and more comorbidities, more complications, and less satisfactory outcomes. Uh, we can uh, place the complications in three groups. One is adjacent segment disease. It may be caudal or cranial part. If it is cranial part, proximal junctional kyphosis is the main one, uh, and it's, it's uh, very common. Uh, Restenosis and osteoporotic fractures are together with that PJK. Instrument failure and pseudoarthrosis uh, may happen, uh, even the breakage of uh, the uh, rods. And systemic complications are the are big deal actually, uh, since though they are um, older persons, the cardiac and metabolic problems, delirium, depression are the main concerns uh, of postoperative uh, status. And the revision reasons, we, we said that approximately 35%. The main, the main reason is the proximal junctional kyphosis, then non-union, and then infection. How can we avoid uh, adjacent segment disease? If we do a shorter fixation, it's, it's easy uh, from, from the beginning. Uh, if you do less rigid fixations, hybrid systems, although there are concerns about them, uh, if we uh, don't make uh, compressive forces, uh, don't, don't make destructive forces, instead do some compressive forces, and uh, provide sagittal balance and lower doses, uh, by even by osteotomy or intrabody fusions, and augment the upper level uh, or so called prophylactic vertebroplasty. These are uh, some measures to avoid adjacent segment disease. There is also caudal adjacent segment disease, especially in L5S1 level. So, uh, the, we should try to stop at L5 and do not involve sacrum to fixation if possible. But if, if there is severe de disc degeneration at L5-S1, if there is spondylolisis, severe lumosacral slope, and previous L5-S1 decompensative surgery, we cannot avoid uh, involving it. Uh, so then if we do it, we must then make an interbody uh, fusion at L5S1 uh, and uh, extend the fixation to uh, il iliac uh, levels. If the upper level fixations are very rigid, then uh, it may not end with the L5S1 problems. It may end with sacral insufficiency fractures. It, it may, this, this insufficiency fractures may also be considered as a, um, a caudal level adjacent segment disease. Even hip joint problems may happen. Uh, PJK is probably the most common complication we see in the upper level. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, what is the description? If there is a more than 10 degree angulation of proximal junctional uh, junction compared to preoperative measures, uh, uh, if there is a failure, that there is so-called proximal junctional failure, failure term, if there is mechanic failure and or spinal instability, Incidence of PJK has been reported between 7 to 46 percent. Uh, and uh, by the time the incidence increases, actually, in the first weeks or months, it's quite uh, less. But after one and a half years, it's, it's been reported 80 percent. What are the mechanisms ca causing PJK? Lack of sagittal balance, deformity progression with aging, postural ligamentous injury, facet injury or fractures, instrument failure, and degenerative disc disease. Some of them may be a part of normal degenerative uh, cascade uh, because uh, we know that the deformity may progress in those ages. Uh, major risk factors are the age, white preoperative sagittal parameters, using pedicle screws, thoracoplasty, overcorrection, fusion of the lower lumbar spine and sacrum. This is uh, from a study from 2014. Uh, there are also minor uh, and undefined uh, risk factors. Uh, in this study, 2016, spinal implant density, a number of screws and number of hooks, surgical levels of fusion, and postoperative lumbar lordosis are the predictors for PJK. PJK is more common with greater postoperative lordosis of the upper lumbar spine. Uh, this is another study from 2018. Greater postoperative uh, upper instrumented vertebra angle. This is the so-called upper instrumented vertebra angle. If if after surgery this is great like this, then you can expect predict uh, a, a PJK will develop. Uh, another study from 2016 is saying that. Uh, PJK incidence 38 percent. Risk factors are lower bone mineral density and lower muscularity and higher fatty degeneration at the level of the, uh, the T2, T10 to L2. And uh, higher postoperative lumbar lordosis change, larger sagittal vertical axis change with surgery. How can we prevent? Provide good sagittal balance, multi-level stabilization, longer instrument design, protect soft tissue on upper instrumented vertebra, use hooks and wires at the upper instrumented vertebra instead of screws. Uh, you can also use polyethylene junctional tethers, proximal transition rods of reduced diameter, less rigid instruments, hybrid constructs, is uh, uh, a solution, the so-called top of uh, systems. Cement augmentation, Dr. Ivy has uh, stressed that very well. Use composite metal in long fixations, distal osteotomy, and use transitional rods. There are many. In case of osteoporosis, you can use larger diameters, longer, longer screws, more fixation points, uh, no correction maneuvers and use cement. This is a case of mine uh, with a significant uh, kyphosis. Uh, at previous surgery, we had done uh, prophylactic vertebroplasty uh, in the upper uh, screw level and two more levels up. No correction loss in three years follow up. Well, this is a, a, a report from 2008 with uh, prophylactic vertebroplasty. The, the results are good. Uh, they had they report 
no PJK in case with cement augmentation, but 15% PJK in other cases. Uh, in 2017, the Spine Journal uh, has, reporting, has reported acute PJ, PJ proximal junctional failure in 5%, however, in two to five years, it's 20%. Good result. In, in a cadaveric study, uh, if uh, the, the three groups they have formed and then six uh, cadavers in each group, and uh, if uh, you use uh, upper instrumented vertebra and adjacent vertebra, uh, one out of six cadavers had got uh, some uh, PJK. Uh, however, there are uh, reports against this, but one of them is that uh, the uh, methyl metacrylate causes degenerative disc disease and uh, fracture risk on adjacent vertebra is, is higher. And uh, it, it, it also increases the uh, uh, cost of the surgery. Uh, instead of PJK using a screw versus hook, uh, they found that with the hook combination, uh, the PJK incidence is quite lower than pedicle, it was 29%. This, there's another study, again, uh, hook only, uh, 24%, but pedicle screw and hook, uh, 29%. Pedicle screw only, it is 35%. Not very significant difference. What about sagittal balance? Achieving a good sagittal balance is very important to prevent PJK. Uh, PJK may be expected if sagittal balance is not achieved, spine is very rigid, compensation mechanisms are not working well, and muscles are so weak. There is uh, one uh, author, uh, a group uh, has been has done a PJK severity scale uh, in a large group of patients. Uh, and uh, if you look at that uh, nerve deficit, focal pain, instrumentation problem, changing kyphosis, uh, upper instrumented vertebra uh, fracture, level of upper instrumented vertebra. So then if the, the number is more than seven, uh, those patients will need a revision. More revision is necessary if it is a traumatic etiology, uh, if Proximal junctional angle is very high. Sagittal vertical axis is high. Female patients and combined approaches. What, how can we treat them? Uh, if uh, your instrumentation level is ending at L2, you can go up to T10. If it is ending at T10, then you can, you can go to T2 or T5. Add vertebroplasty, use hooks, make the compassion correct sagittal balance by intermittent free fusion or a neosotomy. This is one case of PJK that uh, the, the surgeon has uh, went up to T, T11. Uh, but uh, this is an interesting case that uh, after first revision of, because of PJK, a second revision, another PJK after lanchening, another PJK after again lanchening and then surgeon has gone to T3 level. Comment for PJK. Uh, it is quite uncommon in adolescent scoliosis, 7%. Adult scoliosis, it is 35 to 45%. You can prevent PJK by achieving a good sagittal balance, decrease loss on upper instrumented vertebra by using hook or polyethylene junctional tethers and prophylactic vertebroplasty and decrease instrument rigidity use hybrid systems. Uh, I will then come to the systemic complications uh, by stressing that major blood loss may not be tolerated by the elderly patients. And uh, we know that uh, in, in most of the series, uh, vulnerable uh, critical subtraction osteotomy uh, case uh, with multiple level instrumentation, the average blood loss is about 1,500 milliliters. So 
in case of major systemic diseases, simple decompression and limited fusion, fusion may be preferred. Uh, and leaving the deformity there uh, is an option. Uh, recent trend uh, has been MIS surgeries. Uh, and this, this uh, publication is from 2014, is saying that major complications with open surgery is about 45%. However, with MIS surgery, it was reduced to 14%. MIS techniques may be useful for posterior MIS screws and lateral transverse fusion. However, uh, if uh, SVA is more than 100 millimeter, if more lower doses correction is necessary, and if osteotomy necessary, many spine surgeons uh, do not apply uh, MIS techniques. They, it is necessary to make open surgery. One uh, neglected uh, concern about the uh, surgery for elderly is the frailty index. Actually, some patients may be very frail, exhausted. So then uh, their surgery do not end with good, good outcomes. So uh, this study from 2018 uh, with a trauma uh, uh, retrospective study, but they have divided patients in frail and non-frail patients complications in frail patients has been found 33%. And a mortality rate in frail patients is 16%, while non-frail patients 0.6. So, uh, frail defining criteria is necessary to, to learn from the geriatricians. Uh, and uh, we must then uh, define those and uh, we must take some preoperative uh, measures uh, for osteo against osteoporosis, use teriparative more mobilization. For premorbid cardiovascular problems, we need to get less bleeding, less invasive surgeries, fixations as short as possible. Rehabilitation is necessary for lack of mobility and depression and delirium uh, psychological support and less or no metal presence alone, um, mobil mobilization early with an orthosis and decrease, decrease the delirium inducing med medications are necessary. We have defined in a, re a recent review in the world neurosurgery uh, how to improve outcomes in geriatric patients and uh, the high complication rates uh, is a big concern uh, and reoperation rate is a big concern for those patients. And uh, we must come to those conclusions. And I must admit that you can have very nice radiological views at the end, but patient may develop delirium, depression, psychosis, and maybe not mobilizing much, maybe frail, exhausted. Thank you for listening. Any questions? There are some questions on the chat part. Yes. Yeah. Please uh, ask the questions, uh, Honor. Zilili. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I have a connection loss. Do I have to answer the questions? Yeah, please. Uh, a question from Devan. You have talked about PJK. PJK is another problem that we really don't know because in some meetings they say that overcorrection is the main problem and some other uh, meetings they say that less correction is the uh, main problem. So we have to think about the sagittal balance, yes, everything is fine, but we really don't know the reasons 
we really don't know the uh, results, but maybe uh, I'll talk about the classification part, about the gap. This is a good review uh, study. It's a good scoring system. So we have to maybe decide according to the patient. So it's a tailored uh, managed uh, surgery. We can say it in a summary part like that. Everything will change, but I really don't know what's the correct uh, answer to prevent the PJK. <laughs> maybe Pedro can say something about it. Okay. Probably we can ask uh, our faculty, uh, what's your opinion, Pedro? Yeah. I, I analyze in the literature, uh, there is a, a tremendous difficulty for us because we know a huge amount of uh, predictive factors for uh, PJK. The problem is that avoidable or correctable factors are very few. If you have a frail patient who is disabled, and uh, as Max was, Professor Abbey was, was showing, there's no hope that rehabilitation is going to improve the status of that patient. In some case, cases, the patient will prefer not facing surgery uh, just to avoid having a 20% chance of having a worsening of, of their condition. But otherwise, I think there's not much we can do. But still, I think that that's one of, of my thoughts, that there are preventable factors and, and some others which are not preventable. The second thing, technical details to prevent PJK tend to be unsuccessful. And, and I agree with you that cement, tethers proximally, uh, not using screws, but using hooks can have some role, but it's not a, a game a changer at all. And third, we have a huge debate because there are some, there's like a religion of complete correction and the gap score seems to tell us that if you don't have a very complete correction, you will have a higher chance of having PJK. But on the other side, there is the religion of under correction. And Frank Schwab and, and, and his group is one of the leaders of that. They tell, they tell about a patient matching uh, correction goals. And they say they have less PJK by, by using that. It is not our experience. Our experience is more in line with a gap score findings. If you don't have perfect corrections, you have bad results systematically, but probably the frailest, the frailer the patient is, the smaller is the space for, uh, for the interval of correct correction. That's my impression. And it's very difficult to, to deal with this. I, I cannot tell that we have solved the problem of PJ, PJK, not at all. Uh, yes. I agree with, with Pedro, absolutely. And I, I, I mentioned the case we presently have in the hospital, you know, and she, as I said, you know, she started um, with a disc problem uh, 20 years ago, somewhere else. She had a disc herniation L5S1, and now she came with an, uh, basically with an um, uh, adult um, uh, progressing uh, deformity and the novel scoliosis and and so we did step by step since almost a year she's now our patient she comes back and back and now we figured out that her muscle her muscle is stabilized until c7 so they, her muscle had exactly the same problem you know she she had several surgeries and they ended up with C7, we are now ending up, or we have uh, done on Friday surgery up to uh, T4. And, and we measured everything and it is not working. It is just not working. And when you take the tissue of this patient, even when you open it, the muscles, the muscle and the, the, the tendons, the fascia, it's the, 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 the tissue is some way very strange, you know, when you touch it. And I think 
we, what we should in fact do is we should have a biopsy of this, all this tissue and probably should have biopsy of her muscles tissue and maybe they have a genetic defect in, in, in the soft tissue. We can, we can treat the, 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 the bone and the deformity as much as we want. When the soft tissue doesn't go with that and we see that very often the patients who have fatty degeneration of the muscles, um, you can do the best job. It, it just doesn't work because you don't have the active, um, the active control of the muscles or the soft tissue don't have. And I think this is something we have no tools at the moment to measure and to really predict that that is, an, is a problem we just cannot solve at the moment. Yeah. Um, I just wanna ask Dr. Mohammed Hussein, uh, are you there? Uh, Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, what is your opinion about the deformity, adult deformity surgery? Do you do you often do that? Oh, I do. I have done few cases uh, for corrective surgery for adult uh, deformity. Uh, in our country, there is there are many patients, but most of the patients are. Uh, not able to bear the implant costs. So short segment fixation we prefer to correct the, correct, uh, the adult uh, deformity. Okay. Do you have any questions uh, or to faculty? The, Peoples of our uh, country, uh, all aging peoples are uh, increasing day by day due to uh, expanding life, life expectancy. So we have to uh, make expertise in the needs of adult uh, uh, deformity. Uh, through this, by this uh, program, uh, we become happy that our the neurospinal surgeon uh, become introduced to latest uh, techniques or methods uh, of management of adult uh, deformity. They learn from this, especially the young surgeons, how to manage the coronal balance, how to manage the surgical balance, and how to manage the both uh, uh, like I pose in, uh, and scoliosis at the same time. But uh, the complications uh, uh, are very high. They also learn from it. And I believe from uh, this program, the young uh, spinal surgeon will uh, be uh, prepared for, uh, the, uh, for spinal surgery in the coming days to manage the adult uh, adult Deformity. deformity in our country. I am very much grateful to Dr. Uh, Mohammed Jilali, the chairman of WFNS committee uh, for arranging such beautiful program with collaboration of Neurospine Society of Bangladesh. I also am thanks uh, our uh, faculties Onuriamen, Claudio Lamartina, Max Abbe, Pedro Barjano, also uh, thanks from uh, neurosurgeons of Bangladesh. Uh, I think in a few certain days, we can make collaborative program to uh, make uh, better new surgery in Bangladesh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Jilali. Thank you, really. Uh, probably Claudio Lamartina can say something about PJK problem and about this, this panel. Uh, this is a very hot topic. There is no discussion about this, but if you consider, for instance, a parachute, it is intuitive that is a very good device if you want to, to, to solve the, the, the problem. 
that means sometimes uh, uh, what is uh, intuitive is uh, enough for recognize what is uh, useful and what is not useful. Uh, in uh, speaking about uh, PJK, there is, uh, is uh, for me, is intuitive that uh, overcorrection and uh, undercorrection is uh, the, 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 a problem for creating uh, PJK, but also a poor uh, quality of technical surgery is a, 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 a very often the cause of this kind of, uh, of problem. Uh, but it's also intuitive that the muscle can play a significant uh, uh, role in, uh, in creating this kind of problem. Uh, since until now, we don't have very good demonstration that what the cause, what the best way in order to prevent in which way we have to treat uh, this, uh, the, the PJK. In my opinion, what is intuitive should be the, the best guide for, for us. This is the, the reason why I do believe that uh, we have to use uh, this common sense. Uh, there is no need to very complex uh, uh, argument in order to try to demonstrate under correction is better than over correction. This is totally unuseful. The key point is that we transform a, a deformity, and sometimes this is a, a mobile deformity, is not stiff, or a, 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 anyway, is not completely stiff, in something that is a strength, is a, in good alignment, but is a totally rigid. And there is, a, once again, is intuitive. The, the point in which you have the contact of instrumented area with the non-instrumented area is a, 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 a point in which there is a lot of stress. And once again, it's intuitive that at that level, we can have a problem like a, a PJK. But we have the same problem in, in case of a DJK. It's more or less the same problem because we create a long construct, a totally rigid construct, and this is a, a very important for, uh, for understanding uh, the problem related to the border of this long uh, instrumentation. Yes, thank you. Very, very nice remarks. Um, I think we came to the end of our meeting. Uh, Professor Max Ivy, do you want to say in, uh, something in closing? Oh, I think it's um, uh, you have to be recognized for organizing in these very difficult times to bring together the, um, you know, people, uh, experts, and to expose it to the colleagues who have um, still, you know, even if we cannot travel and we can do nothing at the moment, have, are in need, you know, to learn. We all are. In, we need to learn. We need to communicate with 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 other uh, colleagues and um, to improve our our work. And I think it's your merit to organize that. And um, I, I thank you for that. We, we thank you, all the speakers, especially Professor Max Ivy, Claudio Lamartina, and Pedro Barjani. Uh, and my good friend Onur uh, for uh, collaborating with us. And uh, thank you all Bangladeshi friends uh, uh, and also all the participants. I will uh, close the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.